This is a Friday Shoes production. This is lesson 3-7 in our book on page 173, and we have two targets today. I can graph rational numbers on the coordinate plane, and I can find the distance between two points on the coordinate plane. Well, first off, we need to understand the coordinate plane, and what it is is two number lines crossing at 0, 0, and the 0, 0 location is called the origin. And we have worked with these before in plotted points. Uh, but where did this come from? Where, where, where exactly did this actually be developed? Where, who developed this? Well, let's take a look. It's actually a neat story. His name's Rene Descartes. And he was a French man who lived in the 1600s. When he was a child, he was often sick, so the teachers at his boarding school let him stay in bed until noon. He went on staying in bed until noon for almost all his life. While in bed, Descartes thought about math and philosophy. One day, Descartes noticed a fly crawling around on the ceiling. He watched the fly for a long time. He wanted to know how to tell someone else where the fly was. Finally, he realized that he could describe the position of the fly by its distance from the walls on the room. When he got out of bed, Descartes wrote down what he had discovered. Then he tried describing the positions of points, the same way he described the position of the fly. Descartes had invented the coordinate plane. In fact, the coordinate plane is sometimes called the Cartesian plane or Cartesian coordinate system in his honor. And you can see him over there on the left. And he's also credited with stating, I think, therefore I am. Now let's get into exactly what he was talking about. And that's the Cartesian coordinate system here. Again, the two axes, the x-axis, which is the horizontal number line, and the y-axis is the vertical number line, crossing at 0, 0, the origin. And that makes four quadrants counterclockwise, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can then locate points, and you can kind of see the little squares uh, at the little plus signs on the squares where you, they each cross. You can locate those points with coordinates called ordered pairs. And the first number is your x value, and the second number is your y value, meaning the x-axis number and the y-axis number. Well, let's actually do a couple of these before we jump right in and try to find the distance between two points. Let's see here. It says name an ordered pair. Well, for p, how would you name that ordered pair? Meaning, wh what are the coordinates of that location, p, right here? Well, simply follow this. Start at the origin. That's here. And move to the right the x coordinate of point P, which is you can move to the right to that location. In that case, that's three and a half on the number line. And then, so we'd have three and a half, comma, then we have to figure out how much up or down we have to go. In this case, we're going up, so we go up two. So there is the ordered pair, three and a half, two. That would be locating point P. How about you try to find the coordinates, the ordered pairs for J, K, L, and M? J would be the ordered pair. We go negative one and a half, and then we go up to two. That's the coordinates for negative one and a half, or for J, negative one and a half, two. You can see there's two numbers for each dot. And we always do our left right move first before we go up or down. The way I like to remember it is you always have to learn how to crawl before you can climb. All right, so here we are. K, we would go one this direction. In that case, that's a positive one. And then one, well, it's about a half there. So we go up a half to reach our K. And L, well, we start off going to the right. That's two and a half, actually. Two and a half, comma. And then we go down a half. So down is actually negative. That's a negative one half. It's negative one half right there. How about M? Last one. Start at the origin. Move to the left. That's negative two and a half. And then we go down 
to negative two and a half. Again, put parentheses around those. That is how you write an ordered pair. All right, let's take a look at this. How do we graph points given to us with their ordered pair onto a coordinate plane? All right, simply start at the origin and move the x value of units. In this case, 0 0.5. Now notice how they start here at the origin, and then they move to 0 0.5. Then they go to 1.75, which is located right there. So this is the point we want. That's A. Then they label it. Easy enough. So we look at B, or number four. B, same kind of thing. We start at the origin right here. Then they move to, on the horizontal axis, they move to negative two. And on this particular graph, that's where negative two is located, right here. And then they go down three and a fourth, just a little bit past this three right here. There's negative three. So they went a little bit below. That's negative three and a fourth. And then they labeled it with B. How about you give it a shot on these three? Ready, go. We'll take a look at R here. It says, Start at the origin, go two and one fourth. Two and one fourth is about right there, a little bit past the two. Oh, my bad, I'm going to the wrong direction. One, two and a fourth. And then we go up to three and one fourth on the Y axis. So it's roughly gonna be about there. It's hard to do on a, with these dots that are real big. But that's it, and then we would label it R. How about this one? We've got negative one, 0.5, 3. So the first one is, is an x value. So we go to negative 1.5. That's right there. And then we'd go up to 3. Located there. Then, of course, we give it a name, S. And our last one. Start at the origin. Go to negative 1 half, which is right about there. Negative 1 half. Then find negative 3 and 3 fourths on the y-axis. That's down here. There's 1, 2, 3, and then 3 fourths is about there. So there's negative 1 half, 3 fourths. Negative 1 half and negative 3 and 3 fourths, excuse me. Then, of course, don't forget to label it. That one's T. All right. Here's the fun part about this. Once you know the Pythagorean theorem and you know how to plot points, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two points on the coordinate plane. How do you do that? We'll take a look here. They've plotted. It says graph the ordered pair 3, 0, and 7, negative 5. They've done that. Then find the distance, C, between the two points. So they're trying to find this distance right here. You can see the blue line. They're trying to find the distance between these two points. Well, what's nice is we build a right triangle, and then we use the Pythagorean theorem. So you see, this right here is 5. This here is 4. So along these lines, you literally create this right triangle. And you got yourself a 4 right there, and you got 5 on the other side. If you have two sides of a right triangle, we know that we can actually figure out the length of the other side. How do we do that? We literally take 5 and 4, plug it in for our A and B. They're calling this one A, and they're calling this one B right here. So they're plugging those in to the Pythagorean theorem right here. And you can see they've calculated 4 times 4 is 16, plus 25 is 41. And then they actually take the square root of C squared, and square root of 41, and they get C, the value of about 6.4. So this distance right here, C is about 6.4. 6.4 units apart. All right, you give it a shot. Graph each pair of the ordered pairs given, then find the distance between the points. Round to the nearest tenth if needed. All right, this first one, we plot the two points. I'm going to plot 2, 0, and 2, 0 is right here. So I'll do this one in red, 2, 0. 
doesn't have a, a label on it, but there you go. There's the dot. And then I'll do this one in blue, 5, negative 4. So we go 5 over and then 4 down. Whoops. I went too far. Let's move it up there. There you go. So that's 5, negative 4. Now we're looking for this distance right here from this dot to this dot. Well, we do know we can build a right triangle. So watch how I build this. I'll go, how far is it from this red one to the blue one, but going along the lines, kind of like streets, and making a right triangle? Well, I figured out that from the top to the bottom, this side right here, I'll draw it in red. From here to there, that is how many units? One, two, three, four units. I went four units that way. And then going to the right, I am going how many units? Oh, that's three units, isn't it? Well, now we can figure out this one right here. Simply using the Pythagorean theorem. The longest side is what we're looking for, so we'll leave that C value unknown. And then the A and the B, you can plug it into either one. Let's plug 4 in for A and 3 in for B. So we've got 16 plus 9 equals C squared. C squared then is equal to, if you add these together, 25. Then we take the square root of both sides, and C will equal 5. That's an equal 5 because 25 is a perfect square. So that is 5 alone. All right, how about the second one here? Same thing. Let's plot our points. I'm not going to use color on this one. I'm just going to go through it quickly. Here it is. So we go 1 over to the right, then up to 3. Put your dot. Plotted that first point right there. I guess I better use at least the different colors for the points. And then we got negative 2, 4. So we got negative 2 to the left and then up to 4. There it is. And then we're going to connect those with a right triangle, meaning I'll go down along the street then I'm trying to figure out the distance from here to here well that's a real small right triangle but we can make it what's the left side gonna be I can see that, that this is one unit that we've gone down and then how many units over three units over and we're trying to figure out how long the black line is there so we use our Pythagorean theorem a squared plus B squared equals C squared Let's plug in our A and our B, and we don't have C, and that's what we're looking for. So we have 1 times 1 is 1, 3 times 3 is 9, and we've got C squared. Well, this is 10, so we're looking for, once we square root this, we're looking for the square root of 10. And the square root of 10 is really close to the square root of 9, and it's roughly 3.5. I get my calculator here working. What is that? The square root of 10. 3.1. In this case, I'd have to round it 3.2 if we round to the nearest tenth. So 3.2. Came out to 3.16. Don't forget, you can review this video if you need to, or read the examples in the book, or watch the personal tutor videos on, in the online textbook. And as usual, this is always a wonderful Friday Shoes production.